Well, welcome to this service of worship, whether you're joining us on the internet at home or wherever you may be. Welcome and a happy new year to you all on this uh, Sunday of the Epiphany, the revelation, the manifestation of Christ our Lord. This sacred place is located on the traditional lands of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples. Today, our city is home to many indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island. Let us recommit ourselves today to the work of reconciliation with all of our neighbors and in all our relations. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, our King, King of the universe. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. The Lord of glory be with you. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Savior Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make your face to shine upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May your ways be known on the earth, your saving power among the nations. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and reveal your justice in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grateful for the glory revealed today through God-made flesh, let us pray. O God, who by the leading of a star manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth, mercifully grant that we, who know you now by faith, may at last behold your glory face to face. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, and those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ was revealed in flesh, proclaimed among the nations, and believed in throughout the world. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to, Jer to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. And they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Light of the world, as you revealed yourself to the wise men, Reveal yourself to us, that we may call you and you alone King. Now we get to the part about the wise men. There's been Mary and Joseph in the stable, the Christ child laid in the straw, born of a virgin. 
There's been angels filling the night sky with light and loud singing. Shepherds leave their flocks to see this thing announced by the heavens. Amazing things. Events of God's doing. And it all shines with love and peace, goodwill and hope. This intimate, cozy and humble first Christmas is for all times, all places, and all people. But until the part about the wise men, the story's very, you could say, local. Amazing, miraculous, no doubt. The invisible God, beyond understanding or any comparison. The eternal mystery who created everything out of nothing, now gently breathing as a real human baby. Eyes not yet open, his neck propped by the arms of mother and father. It's truly a wonderful thing. Yet it's almost like a sweet family secret at this point. The shepherds know, but they're back in the fields with the sheep. No one really believed what shepherds had to say anyway. Even so, Mary and Joseph believe what the angels told them that this child would be the one God promised to Israel. Peoples the world over would come to honor him. He would be known as the only true and worthy king among all nations. But at this point in the story, what God has done is mostly kept stored up in Mary's heart. Only her cousins and a couple people in the temple have recognized this child for who he really is. But then, maybe a couple years later, maybe less, it's like the whole world shows up. Well, not quite, but representatives for the whole world. Lords from the most distant lands. They practice strange and foreign magic. They read stars like news headings. Not the kind of thing synagogue-going people like Mary and Joseph quite trust, but these magicians with their rich and colorful clothes, their other language, their funny mannerisms probably. They bring gifts for a king, the gold, the frankincense, the myrrh. They send a message, you're our king, they say. And we, people under other lords from faraway lands, will follow you. And it's this point in the story, when the wise men are adoring the Christ child, that Mary and Joseph must have looked at each other in astonishment and thought, It's really happening. The basic message of Epiphany Sunday is this. When the wise men show up to honor Jesus as the newborn King of the Jews, they find that God is changing the world forever. 
They think they've set out to dutifully pay homage to another king, as the wealthiest people often must, win the favor of the latest lord. But as it turns out, it's not so much them going out on a personal errand. It's God leading them to meet an utterly new kind of king for an utterly new kind of world. The lordship of this little one is God's own life in human form. They haven't been brought out of their distant lands to pay respects to some ruler's heir. They've been brought out to find and worship the living God. They won't return the same. What they've known of God and the world by their odd methods now appears like guessing or just distraction. The drab world created by other lords, controlled by money and manipulated desires, by weapons and selfish leaders, is gently but suddenly shown to be a sham. Truth shines before them. Here's what God's like. Here's where truth abides. Here's the home of every people and person. The face of this beloved child. God's done something here. By inviting these odd, colorful strangers to see God's face in human form, the Lord of creation welcomes back all the lost children of Adam and Eve, all us lonely, guilt-ridden, doubtful people of the earth. What God started with the people of Israel now opens to all the relationship that God has with Mary and Joseph is offered even to the most odd of strangers. We, who have known God only in the shadows of philosophies and magic and science and dreams, are offered the real wisdom and it amounts to a love, simply human and simply God, that leaves all that in the dust. What I mean to say is that our own lives, even now, this late and far from the events of the Christmas story, are on the same path as the Magi. We're those strangers. Sometimes it doesn't feel like God has carried us all the way to Bethlehem yet. To have the proper epiphany, to see Jesus and say, yes, you, your world. But then sometimes we do get a taste of that. Sometimes it seems like the events of Christmas are, are still stored up in Mary's heart, like a well-kept secret yet to be revealed. But then again, all kinds of peoples, with all kinds of clothes and all kinds of strange ways, now pray in Jesus' name. Their own lives show Christ's rule. And sometimes it feels like we've already made the return journey from Bethlehem, but 
things just haven't changed the way we thought they would. We're still subjects in that drab sham world made of bad money and bad leaders and our plain old human sins. To that, I'd just say this. The story doesn't end with the wise men. There is one true king. His name and face is the very presence of the invisible God. His patience and humility can be a little annoying. But to that we can say again and again, yes, you, your kingdom come. Amen. Let us confess the faith as we say. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Our Savior Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
Let us pray. Lord, accept your people's gifts, not of gold, frankincense, or myrrh, but hearts and voices raised in praise of Jesus Christ, our light and our salvation. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All honor and praise be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For at this time we celebrate your glory made present in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, the King of all the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Savior sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice, our praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By whom with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us as our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. Dear friends, I invite you in this moment, wherever you may be, to receive Christ in communion with the saints and the gathering of God's people, seen and unseen, and present with us now. In Christ's body, many are made one. We receive you, Lord Jesus Christ. We welcome your presence in us and together proclaim our love for you. With our hearts and minds, our souls and strength, we worship you. With the saints and angels, we adore you. With your whole church, we proclaim your reign. Come to us, though many, and make us one in you. Behold who you are. Become what you receive. Feed on Christ in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, the bright splendor whom the nations seek, may we who with the wise men have been drawn by your light discern the glory of your presence in your Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. May the light of the glorious gospel of Christ shine in your hearts and fill our lives with joy and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
Thanks be to God.